Welcome to Live Your Passion. I'm your host, Alex Stephen, from Life Transforming Treasures. By sharing the wisdoms from my life journey of raising a successful deaf child and making a life-altering decision, I empower people to transform their lives to one of freedom and fulfillment. On Live Your Passion, we bring guests who share their stories their challenges, and how they overcame them. So hopefully, you could get some wisdoms to help you on your journey to overcome your challenges. I'm an author, a speaker, and a transformation coach. To help you in this conversation, I have free resources on my website, alexsteven.com. This morning, I have my guest, is originally from Uganda, and I want to welcome Yusuf Kalule. Hi, Yusuf. Welcome Hi. to the show. Thank you so much, Steve. Yeah, and yes. you could introduce yourself. Oh, yes, sure. <laughs> I'm happy to be here on this Live Your Passion show yeah. with you, and um, I say doing a great job. My name is Yusuf Kalule. Yeah. I come from Uganda. I've grown up in Uganda. Uganda is in the eastern, eastern part of Africa. Right. Yes, that's where I come from. I'm here in the U.S. with my family my wife and my daughter. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And thanks a lot for coming on the show. Oh, really sure. appreciate it. Well. And I know you have a very unique story. Yeah. And tell us, a, you give us a little background about growing up in, in Uganda. Okay. You know, some of the things, you know, that happened to you in your childhood, things that were beyond your control. Oh, yeah. I was born and raised in, a, I come from a Muslim background. Mm -hmm. uh, my father had four wives in one house. <laughs> in one house. Yeah, and my mother was one of the four wives. Mm -hmm. So my dad was shot, it was during the time of war, and my dad was killed when I was one week old. Mm -hmm. So my mother had to leave, you know, she was still a young girl, and she had to run away for her dear life. She went away with three children, me being the youngest, and then she got married again, you know, another life. So I've seen her struggling, being the mother, being the father, being everything, you right. know, to raise up children in a world of sickness, in a world of negativity, right. in a world of ha not having enough, yeah. just even the basics. Mm -hmm. but she, she struggled to bring us up until at that time when I was really grown up as a boy. Yes. And I started working when it was too early, at the age of like maybe six years, seven. I used to fetch water, supply people with water, do anything that I could do so that I earn a living, to earn something, money. Yes. Okay, so, so that's like child labor. Yes. Uh, there you call it child <laughs> labor. Yeah. So if it, I mean, I did it all. Anything that I could do, you know, maybe it's the reason I don't have too much hair. <laughs> I carried all the jerry cans on my head. On your head. You know, mm -hmm. to ensure that I get the money. And the money I got, I paid my fees before what you call elementary school here. I yeah. paid my fees right from elementary up to the university. When I finished, uh, when I graduated from university. You work, you work for your own money to go to school. Exactly. Because your mom yeah. could not she afford it. She couldn't afford it. And, and you did not have a father figure, so to speak. Yes, um, there was no father figure. I, I've, I've grown up not seeing a good role model, like a man I would look up to and say, wow, this is a great man. I'm growing to be like this man. So everything was about my mother, my mother, and my mother. There was yeah. no this father figure in my life. So when your mom remarried, how was that for you? Did she have more children? D did that marriage help you all financially or, um, you know, any sort of stability in the family? Uh, Steve, I must be, I, I, I must tell you this, that I think my mother was very unlucky when it came to marriages. Yeah. When she got married again, she got other siblings of mine. Now we are a family of eight okay. children. Yeah. But again, this man was not responsible. He couldn't take even responsible responsibility of his own children. Yeah. So again, my mom was dumped in this two-roomed house, not two-bedroomed, two-roomed house, mm -hmm. where we were all living, you know, sleeping, lying down. Right. And he was away. I mean, he was away. We've grown up all with uh, my, my mother only. Uh, so how d your siblings, how did they, I, I know you worked, you had the ambition to go to school, yeah. pay, pay your way through school. 
How did your siblings handle this situation? Yeah, the situation was uh, those days people used not to pay a lot of attention taking girls to school and you know helping. I mean, education was for only those who can't afford. And if you can't afford, no one blames you because yeah. you can't afford. Yeah. After all, it's a big number who cannot afford. Yeah. So I couldn't fetch water to pay my brother's fees, my sister's fees, right. but I could pay mine. Mm -hmm. So I paid for mine and in my family, I must tell you, it's only me who got the first bachelor's degree. Mm -hmm. The rest did not. Yeah, did because what, what level of school they finished? Uh, some of them finished elementary level. Others didn't make it up to high school. Those who have made it up to high school is when I had grown up right. and I, I took responsibility. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those are the ones who are actually they are still in school. Yes. Yeah, but my elder sisters, they all dropped out real quick. Bef uh, yes, elementary level, yeah. So the girls, there's no attention to the girls' education? Yeah, right country. now, though, it's really coming up. But those days, you know, it's, I mean, there was no reason to keep girls in school. Even now, when you go to the rural areas, the village is far away. Still, you find boys going to school and girls not going to school because th they don't see any value. Although the government is trying and everyone is trying, you know that we have several organizations funded by the U.S. to help the girls go to school. Yeah, but still, you know, those days over was, it was not really a big deal to have a, a girl drop out of school. So the culture you grew up in in Uganda yeah. is, you know, there is no attention to the woman, respect for women, it sounds like. No, there was nothing like empowering women, right. no, educating women, no, women were supposed to look after the men, so. Okay, just <laughs> make children look after the home. Yeah. And nothing like education and career. Yeah, actually they used, they, I remember, I don't know whether it was a joke, actually it was true, but they used to <laughs> say that a woman's office is the kitchen. Yeah. That's so they send they the kitchen to yeah. cook for us food, mm -hmm. the men, while they do progressive things and all that, yeah. they are in their office back in the kitchen. In the kitchen. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, growing up, it, it was tough for you in the environment. Yeah. You know, your mom, you never had enough. You had to make whatever you had do. Mm -hmm. But you had this ambition to go to school. Yeah. And tell us a little bit about some of the difficulties in working and trying to put yourself through school. Share with the audience yeah. s some of the difficulties yeah. you went through. Some of the difficulties I went through, at that time when I was going to school, I suffered from harsh words. Steve, I used to hear all the negative comments, yeah. all the negative words, unfortunately straight from my own, yeah. your own relatives. Yes. They're the ones who could assure you a hundred percent, you won't make it. You're not going anywhere. You can't make it. You're such a failure. Those were the words that could define me. Right. Okay, And at that time, because everything was scarce, I lacked even the best resources. There was this urge in me. There was this good in me. But I was so limited by the resources. I'll give you an example. Libraries in schools. The schools that have very good libraries and they're well equipped, I couldn't afford them because tuition or fees in those schools is real high. Mm -hmm. So I couldn't go to such right. schools. I went to very, very local schools where if the whole school has no library. Right. So I wa my reading was limited to that. And then going back home, you know the environment, you have to go to school from eight up to five. Mm -hmm. And then when you go home, you have to do some domestic work. But again, you have to supply your clients. The, my water clients, mm -hmm. I used yeah. to supply water. So I would go to house or home, like now I'm resting, at around 10 p.m. after fetching water. If I didn't supply all my clients with water that evening, at 5, I'm awake. Yeah. going to fetch water from the pond, mm -hmm. supply my clients. By the time you go to school, you're tired. Yeah. You don't have time for, you know, discussions. You don't have time to revise your books. You don't have, yeah, there was a lot of scarcity. Mm -hmm. So that's the environment we grew in. And then our, there were the, the people were staying with, they were so inferior. Everything you look at was so dark. 
you yeah. know there's nothing that was showing you a brighter future everything i would look at was so dark and limited you're not going anywhere yeah. okay your sisters are not going to school none of your uncles went to school the, the, the aunties didn't go to school so who are you to make history <laughs> <laughs> where are you getting it from where that you, you get you from? get bachelor's degrees here yeah. it's not in the family so people laugh at you <laughs> yeah. they talk down to you yeah but you had that ambition yes to, to do to do better yes. and, and go higher in sure. life sure so t tell us a little bit how you know some of the things that propel you from where you you know from this place of darkness so to mm. speak to um to to get in you know getting out of that could mm -hmm. you share with us some of the things exactly many times and i've said this before alex the best person to listen to is your heart right when you're doing anything listen to your heart i had this urge in me i had this voice in me that yusuf you can change history right you can change history. Now, your history can be good, <laughs> yeah. but you can change it to yeah. better, right. okay? I had it in my head, if I'm going to do extraordinary things that no one has done, right. people not having gone to school does not mean that we must not go to school. Right. So I had that voice in me of changing history, right. okay? And when I had it, it pushed me, it persuaded me to do whatever I was doing. Mm -hmm. Not copying it from anyone, but because I had a self-drive yeah. in me. That inner you, the inner Alex, mm -hmm. is, is, the, is the one to follow, okay? Right. It keeps you going, it keeps you pushing. No one will understand why you do the things you do, but you know, you know why. what you're doing yeah, and why you're doing it. Because it's from your heart and yeah. it's you. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So that pushed me amidst all the shortcomings, amidst all the limitations, I pushed and I strived through. Mm -hmm. You know, I went to school, I graduated. Oh my goodness, it was big. Unfortunately, by the time I graduated, my mom had gone to be with the Lord, so she she couldn't share the celebration, but I was so happy that I was able to graduate. And when I graduated, I got a job in Uganda. I had a job with a corporate firm, mm -hmm. and I was doing pretty well. I, and I had my, f I, I got established. I got a family. I married my wife. I got a child. So I was really established. But it all started with. So all me. started. Yeah, I know you said you heard that voice in you. Yes. And share with share with the audience. Mm. You know, they they heard your story. The the hard upbringing you came up in in your culture in Uganda. Yeah. But share with them some more points on how you came out of that. I know the voice was one. Yeah. W what sort of people you surround yourself with? What, you know, what were you looking at? What really motivated you? Yeah. Another key thing, after listening to my heart, one of the things I re that were really so important to me at that time that helped me push through was I've identified role models in my life. I identified people who seem to be living the kind of life that I admire. Right. And in that way, you know, they couldn't come to me, but I had to go, go to, to them. them. Yeah. So I looked for them. There are those I approached and say, I admire the kind of life you live. You have a good job. You're well established, okay? You're a respected man in the mm -hmm. community. Mm -hmm. What made you? I made such people my friends. Ladies and gentlemen, every time you surround yourself with the positive people, you have no choice but to to succeed yes when you surround yourself with people who are negative negativity becomes your name right okay so it's very very important and this it's your choice the kind of people yeah. that you're going to surround right. yourself right. with right sometimes when we are in hardships we ident we get to put ourselves in a circle. Well, these are the people who understand me. We suffer the same way, you know, so because we go through the same challenges, so we understand each other. But no one is helping each other to get out of it. Right. So before you know, you get used to the situation. Back home in Uganda, people say poverty, ah, it's part of us, it's part of life. Because I'm poor, he's poor, he's poor, he's poor. So poverty is our definition, mm -hmm. becomes our name. So you break it, okay? Mm -hmm. Surround yourself with people who add value to you. And I looked for those people, and I found those people in a church. Right. I went to the church where I met. It was in that church when I first met someone who told me, Yusuf, 
you're going to be the head and not the tail. You, you That's have powerful words. Yes, yeah. you're going to be the head and not the tail. Yusuf, you're going to go where people have not gone. Yeah. You're going to be an example in your family. God has a purpose for your life. Mm. Goodness, yeah. I can never forget those yeah. words. And I said, really? D you don't know me. Why are you saying such words? Mm. I do not know what he, say, he saw in me, yeah. but he said those words. I said, okay, let me find out if this man is true or not. And here I am. He was so right. So those words, such people with a great support of encouragement, right. you know, sometimes someone, you, they don't need to give you a blank check or, mm -hmm. I mean, or, or $1,000. But Alex, a word that you can make it. Ex this is exactly what you're doing. I mean, I'm defining you. <laughs> that positive statement you make to someone, yes. it pushes someone an extra mile. So yeah. I decided to get, to surround myself with successful people mm -hmm. and they inspired me. Right. And then another thing that really pushed me, I got tired of the situation. People, when you get tired of your situation, you get out of it. Yeah. If I if I don't find my life, my, my situation as a problem, and you find it as a problem, you will struggle to help me, and I might not respond positively to the help because it's not I know it's not a problem to me. Mm. You think it's a problem, but it's not a problem mm. to me. When you speak to yourself, I said, I'm tired of this. Enough is enough. Now, the moment you say enough is enough, you're making your first step mm. to get out of it. You make a commitment. Uh -huh. yeah. Now, when you make a commitment mm -hmm. and you have the self-drive because you are fed up of that situation yeah. and now you're determined and you're committed to changing it, yeah. to moving mm. towards the yeah. kind of life yeah. you want to live. Yeah. Yes. So that really helped me and it pushed me, you know, it kept me going. Yeah, but then another key thing that really helped me is um, breaking my circles. You know, sometimes we limit ourselves. We, I, I mean, a, a, a show like this, okay? Mm. It takes courage for someone to tune on this TV <laughs> and watch. Yeah. Leave your passion. Yeah. Now start looking for great resources that will help you. Oh my goodness. You have free resources on the website. Mm -hmm. That's gold, free mm -hmm. of charge. Yeah. Gold, free of charge. <laughs> yeah. So start reading things that will inspire you. Watch movies that inspire you. Mm -hmm. Read books that inspire you. Right. Okay. Now, because now everything around you inspires you, left, right, center, I mean, forget about failure. Yeah. You will make it. And that kept me going. It kept me going. I met good people. My social life, I really had to do much about my social life. The way I talk to people, the way I present myself to the people. Because I was a young man, and I'm admiring these big people. They are CEOs. They are managers in places. So I couldn't go to their offices dressed a certain way or present myself yeah. in a certain way, I had to start portraying myself, start seeing myself in that image as if I'm also now corporate, yeah. as if I'm also now a CEO. Yeah. And you know, they went on uh, introducing me to their friends and what so before you know, I had a circle of friends, grown up respected men around me in church, in all my social life communities, the people I used to hang out with, mm -hmm. they all used to inspire me. But you made that choice. The choice was mine that yeah. I'm choosing to change history. The right. choice was mine that I choose to get tired of my situation. situation. Boom. Yeah. I had to move. And so that is how you got out of it. Yes. And I mean, th this is such an inspiring story mm -hmm. on how you got out of it. Yeah. You know, because you look at people, successful people, yeah. and you approach them. Yeah. Because you wanted to get off. You were tired of yeah. your situation. Yeah. You join a church and people were speaking positiveness into you yeah. and power into you. Something that you never had in your exactly. entire life, childhood growing yes. up. No father figure, no uncles who were speaking those words into you. Yeah. And you made the choice 
to have successful people and positive people mm -hmm. in your circle. Yes. So this, this is what will help the audience mm -hmm. in Live Your Passion. Okay. And, and your story, Yusuf, reminds me so much of my story. Mm -hmm. I came from humble beginnings. Yeah. I remember we didn't have any running water, mm -hmm. no electricity, grew up on a dirt floor. Mm -hmm. But I had it in my heart at 10 years old that I was going to go to university. Wow. And I came to the United States to go to university. Yeah. I had it at 10 years in my heart, the woman I was going to marry. Oh, wow. I didn't know how she was going to look, but I knew how she was going to think. Okay. And I met my wife eight years after in high school. Okay. And we've been together for 41 years. Wow. So I, I know what you're talking about when you have it in your heart. Mm -hmm. And people, you have to make the choice to surround yourself with positive people. You have to go out there and look for mentors mm -hmm. and have mastermind groups. Yeah. That I used to do those things. I didn't know those words then. Mm. But I used to go and ask people questions and be on top of what I'm looking for. Ask <coughs> questions. Yeah. Should I go to this university? Should I go to the oil field and do apprenticeship? And the, the choice was mine. Yeah. So I hear what you're saying. Yeah. So now tell us a little bit but you know you came through you know these hard times you told us how mm -hmm. but where, where it put you in terms of your education and your life mm -hmm. after that after after when i had my job mm -hmm. and i was working i got this chance to come to the u.s mm -hmm. and i thought about it i prayed about it and i felt like i was making a right decision mm -hmm. why my country still there are less opportunities mm -hmm. okay and i know i do, i'm not the kind of person who settles for less yeah, yeah. so i said okay i'll expand my territory and let me look for wider opportunities and i came to this country seven months ago with my wife and my child and we are here and guess what this is a country full of opportunities but again it goes back to you what do you see yeah. If you are negative, if you are kept, uh, you, uh, you surround yourself with negative people, even the opportunities around you, you won't be able to see them. Yes. You won't see the opportunities because negative defines you. Negativity goes ahead of you. Have you seen people like, tell you, like Alex, you're really smart in your suit. They only don't say you're smart. After saying you're smart, they say, but if you're here, the, 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 the curves were this way, <laughs> you know? No, first appreciate that the man is smart. Right. There are opportunities. Don't tell me about the hiccups. All I see are great opportunities. Yeah. If I have a positive attitude, if I have a positive mind, if I feel it in me that success is for me, I'll execute the opportunities and the use of your seeing now, Count the years down the road is not the same use if you're going to see after a year or two or five. Right. Yeah. And when you graduated from school, from, from college in Uganda, yeah. you went into corporate. Yeah, but so you were realizing your dreams in mm. terms of your education, in terms of your job. Yes. But I must tell you that sometimes, actually not sometimes, most of the times, we walking to success is a journey. Mm -hmm. And at times it's a rough journey. Yeah. It might not be rough all the way, but there are hiccups, there are bumps. Well, you know, my friend Les Brown says, nobody said it will be easy, uh -huh. but it will be worth it okay. in the end. <laughs> Perfect. I find <laughs> lots of sense in that. Yeah. So, so, right from uh, my, my, my college, I didn't straight away go to the corporate world. I've mm -hmm. done odd jobs, very odd jobs, yeah. you know, and my target has always been, well, this is a corporate world. How do I get into the corporate world? Right. I don't care how I enter the corporate world. If I join in as a driver, fine. I'll grow. I'll mm -hmm. find myself grow within right. that so it's been a journey i appreciate where i'm coming from did you notice that it sounds very good talking about our history mm -hmm. when we have overcome it right if you're still held by your history you don't want to talk about it mm -hmm. so i've walked that journey it's been a hiccup here and there but it is worth it like you've said i appreciate i look back and say I can't believe I came this far. Oh my goodness, I'm so happy of where I am and looking forward to where I'm going. That's the art of the positive yes. mind. And you, Yusuf, it's so, you know, you define your dream yeah. and you took action. Mm -hmm. And that's important 
you know, people say America is a land of opportunity. Mm -hmm. It is. Yeah. But you have to get up and get it. No yeah. one will bring it to you. Identify the opportunities. Mm -hmm. Go to where opportunities yeah. are. Mm -hmm. This is how I look at opportunities, Alex. Opportunities move. They don't knock twice. Mm -hmm. An opportunity knocks once. Right. When it knocks, you should be able to open and it comes in right. and it you know you put it to use and then it goes to another person yeah okay see this is the logic what would you do first would you learn to drive after getting a car or you learn how to drive and then you get, the, get car. the car so get ready for the opportunity mm -hmm. by the time it comes to you mm -hmm. you're able to execute it it will change your life before it goes to another person mm -hmm. or through you you will extend the opportunity to another person right yeah so it's you know you're in gratitude for what comes to you yes and you're also given uh -huh. which brings me to the point i know you shared that when you succeeded in in accomplishing some of your dreams yeah. back home in uganda your education your job getting married yeah. you know having your own family yeah. you just didn't sit there and say oh no i've made it yeah you went out and you started to give back exactly. share with us a little bit you know what that entails yeah sometimes our challenges in life they don't only end with us we are the nation we are the communities we live yeah. in, okay? Mm -hmm. So it's no longer my problem, but it's my community's problem. Mm -hmm. If you're poor, your community will be poor, your family will be poor, and that cannot, you cannot say we have a rich country when people are poor. Mm -hmm. So when you are changed, when you are transformed, then how do you extend mm -hmm. the transformation and the renewal to other people? people. It's mm -hmm. always good to give back. Mm -hmm. How do I give back? You give back what you have. Right. And you give back your best. Mm -hmm. I do not know how to give out a shirt because it has a hole, because mm -hmm. it's worn out, then I give it out. I always desire to give my best. best. So I went back to the community. I share the same story. I share the same skills I learned from the university. Mm -hmm. Business skills, communication skills, leadership skills. Mm -hmm. I used to motivate people. I had radio talk shows with right. one of my friends in Uganda who used to sponsor me. Mm -hmm. She's called Margaret Chambade. Right. Mm -hmm. And you know, we w used to go to radios and that way I touched the lives of people it is a seed I was sowing. Right. My point was to sow this seed. Right. I'm happy to some, it might have germinated, and they have a story to mm. tell about Yusuf. Right. Right. Maybe to others, the seed went on a rock yeah. <laughs> and it didn't germinate. Yeah. But it's so, so important to share. Every time you keep yourself in a cocoon, you're avoiding other people to learn from you, yeah. but also you're stopping yourself from learning mm -hmm. many things from other people so open up go to the people share. go to the communities share mm -hmm. when you share then your desire of seeing a w the world the community the way you, you want to see it it will come to pass because of your giving back your fulfillment and your involvement in the development of your community and the nation at large yeah yeah. So I mean, this this been great. You shared with us, you know, where you came from, yeah. the hardships growing up, losing your dad when you were just one week mm -hmm. old. Mm -hmm. But that didn't stop you. Yeah. You kept going forward. Uh, you shared with us how you how you came over yeah. this um, you know this lifestyle, this culture. Yeah. And you got out of it through education, through yeah. putting yourself through school, yeah. finding the right people, going out there and talking to people and making the choice. Yeah to have the right people in your circle. Yeah. And you, you got a big break to come to the United States. Yeah, it was big, oh my goodness. Big, big break, but yeah. that's what happened when you yeah. take action. Yes. When you go out there, when you make a commitment, mm -hmm. when you're in gratitude, that's, that's what happens. Yeah. And this is what we want to share with the audience, that yes. you could do it to whatever challenges you're going through in life. Mm. You could learn something from Yusuf's journey. It may not be the same thing, but you could u use some of the things how he got out of it yeah. and use it in your situation to help you overcome your challenges. Yeah. So I want to ask you, Yusuf, uh, is there anything you would like to share with the audience? Any tools or nuggets that you like to leave them with? Yes. 
Exactly. Ladies and gentlemen, whoever is the, our, our dear viewers, there are key, key principles, key major things I want you always to remember. These things have worked for me, and I tell you what, this will always work. One of them, make a decision. Choose to change. Choose to transform. Mm -hmm. Make a choice, a deliberate choice. And I, your choice is always followed by actions, okay? Mm -hmm. Two, surround yourself with rightful thinking people. Rightful thinking people. And every rightful resources, put it to use. Mm -hmm. Three, start now. Mm -hmm. Start to move. Start. I mean, many times people have very big dreams, but start, okay? As to always, you know, a plan can always be a good plan, mm -hmm. but it only becomes the best when you put it to action and you see the results out of it. So, ladies and gentlemen, you can make it. My story, my challenges may not have been yours, but I have a lot to learn from you. You yeah. could be having a few things to learn from me. Yeah. But the most important thing, choose to start, break the limitations, break the circles. Mm -hmm. Don't Let not negativity whisper to you always. Choose purpose to be positive. Yeah. Choose. And most important, what is your passion? Yeah. Live your passion. Yeah. Define your oh dreams. <laughs> what What is your passion? Yeah. Alex, I'm, oh my goodness, I will never forget this. You, at the age of 10 years, <laughs> you knew the kind of wife you are going to get <laughs> and how your wife would think. <laughs> at 10 years, who would think about <laughs> that? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah. So but choose. Yeah. Um, What's your passion? Mm -hmm. What kind of man are you seeing 10 years from now? Right. What kind of man are you seeing five years from now? Mm -hmm. That picture, that yeah. picture helps Attracts you move it, towards yeah. what yeah. you're seeing. Right. So be defined by your passion. Mm -hmm. People might speak negative about you. They don't define you. They don't define you. You yeah. define yourself. What's define your passion? Yeah. You have your definition, the kind of person you want to live. And I'm telling you, God has a plan for you. Yeah. God had a plan for me. Yeah. And this plan is always a better plan. Better so plan. find who you have to be and yeah. where you have to be. There you'll be finding your passion. Yeah. Sure. Thanks a lot. Thanks oh, a lot for you're that. Welcome. i like to close off the show by um, uh, sharing with the audience my books. Um, this is my first book, Courage in Our Hearts, A Family's Love Story. Um, they're all on Amazon. Um, the accompaniment to it is Discover Your Inner Treasure. Um, third book I have here is Inspirational Life Quotes, a collection for your daily motivation, 365 days of the year. And what I like to do on the show is read the mm. quote of the day. Mm. And let's see what the quote is today. Um, it's right here. So the quote of the day is, life is like a game of cards. Mm -hmm. The hand you are dealt is determinism. The way you play it is free will. Okay. And that's from Nero. And I think this is so relevant. Oh my goodness. Yeah. It's relevant for the day. <laughs> relevant to your story, <laughs> yeah. defining your dreams. The hand you are dealt. Yeah. You had no control the cards were over here. your life. Yeah. yeah. So wow, important. So um, thanks a lot. Oh, Ta well. Thanks a lot for coming on the show, Yusuf. Mm -hmm. And appreciate you coming on the show and, you. and sharing Thank your you so story. Much. Really Thank appreciate you so much. it. Right. Again, this is Alex Stephen on Live Your Passion. Thank you. Production support provided by Medfield.tv. Access to our community.